world's cities continue to grow at an unprecedented rate, the construction industry has boomed, embracing many new building techniques and materials. Over the last few decades, aluminium composite panels and expanded polystyrene have been widely used in construction. But as recent events have shown, some varieties of these materials are combustible. In the event of a fire, these combustible materials can contribute to the fire spreading. You may have some concerns that these materials have been used on your building. If so, here are some checks you can carry out, as well as some other places you can go for more information. The first step is to examine the outside of your building. To identify any expanded polystyrene, look for surfaces covered in render. Using your hand or a small hammer, tap the surface. If you hear a solid sound, then it's likely that the render is covering bricks or a solid block surface. If you hear a hollow sound, then the render is likely covering a lightweight material. This may be expanded polystyrene, which is highly combustible. Or it could also be several other materials. Some of these are combustible, some aren't. When testing, a small hole is drilled, which enables a look inside to identify the material. This should only be done by an appropriately qualified professional. At times, this sample may also need further laboratory testing to understand what the material is. Aluminium composite panels are more easily recognised by their coated metallic look. It's the polymer cores inside some varieties of these panels that have been found to cause fire to spread rapidly. The most combustible of these contain a 100% polymer core, usually polyethylene. As these core materials are completely encased inside the aluminium, you'll need to get further information on what type of panels they are. Your owner's corporation or building manager, local council and the VBA may be able to help with this. If the owners or the owner's corporations are wanting to know the cladding on their buildings, the first step would be to inquire with the council as to what documentation they have on the building. Permits will have the information of the builder, the owner, the build date, and the plans and documentation should include the type of cladding. If you're a potential buyer, you can also check the Section 32 statements prior to purchase. These may contain information on combustible cladding, including any notices, reports and recommendations issued by the VBA or Council MBS. As Section 32 statements are sometimes prepared several months before sale, requesting an up-to-date Owners' Corporation Certificate is a good idea. The VBA is also in the process of carrying out a statewide cladding audit. If you're unsure if your building has been assessed by the audit, it's a good idea to contact the VBA to check. If it's been assessed by the audit, the VBA will be able to share the assessment findings with you. Where a building has been identified with combustible cladding, total replacement may not necessarily be required and residents may actually be able to remain in their building while rectification works are being carried out. They will need to engage the services of registered building practitioners in order to guide them through that rectification process and that will typically involve enga engaging a fire safety engineer to assist with the design of the external cladding and some of the fire safety systems. A building surveyor in order to issue the building permit and obviously a builder in order to carry out those works. It's in the interests of everyone's safety that buildings are properly assessed and if needed made safer. The VBA is taking a collaborative approach. There's a process in place and resources available either online or in person that can help everyone navigate cladding issues and improve the fire safety of their properties.